Hi, welcome to Griffith Morgan House here in Pensacola. I'm Bob Fisher Hughes, the chairperson of Griffith Morgan House, and today I'd like to introduce you to a historical interpreter and medical scholar, Nicole Salomon. Come on in. So my name is Nicole Salomon, and I am an 18th century scholar with over 20 years of experience. I primarily study the late 18th century from 1775 to 1799, uh, scholarly medicine that's university level medicine that was uh, published in London. I have also done substantial study into George Washington's cabinet of his initial cabinet, his first six people that he brought on as his advisors and their health and their mental well-being and how the presidency and working for, towards the presidency changed them and ultimately made all except one's health fail. I also have written a book on, named Forgotten and it's on the medicine of the Continental Army it takes place through a fictional character named Abigail, whose house is destroyed by the British, and she joins up with the Continental Army. She quickly makes friends with notable characters such as Alexander Hamilton, and she works through the Continental Army's medical tents in order to bring the reader a closer understanding of the medicine and the sociology within the camps. And it does leave off as a bit of a cliffhanger as a sequel is coming soon. I'm here today at the Griffin Morgan House and I've brought with me a few herbs and medical tools that were used uh, well, primarily in domestic medicine. Domestic medicine was medicine that was done in the home and it was mainly done by women. Women were in charge of sewing and cooking and sometimes this played into medicine as well. Cooking played into medicine with food and herbs. Lavender, sage, feverfew, and rose hips were all used in medicine, primarily to bring down fevers, of which there were plenty. Women also did other types of medicine, such as stitches, or maybe setting bones, or uh, setting sprains, or anything that could have happened while the man was out doing his job, especially if he was farming, or the uh, children were out playing, or helping with their chores. Other things that women did were cauterized wounds. And what cauterizing is, is taking one of these little metal sticks and putting the tip in the fire until it was red hot. Then they would put it into the wound in order to stop the bleeding. This was very painful and usually led to more fevers, which led to more herbs, like the ones I've mentioned prior. So these are uh, two different types of herbs that were very popular in the 18th century. This is mugwort, and it was used to disinfect uh, wounds. So these are all these are pre-dried. Sometimes you would buy them pre-dried from a, a neighbor. Other times you would dry them yourself, and it comes out something like uh, almost like dust or dust bunnies. And you would put it in your tea or make a salve out of it. And if you put it into your tea, the thought was that the you would put it into your body, so whatever you put into your body would then be, would, would pass through your body, and any infection, even if it was on your hand, would then get healed as the herb passed through it. Mandrake root, also very, very popular. This is more like little sticks. Oops. Uh, also used in your tea. Uh, this was used primarily for, again, fever and trying to bring down incredibly high fevers, which was good because unlike rose hips or sage or lavender or thyme, it tastes like sticks. So you didn't want to use it very often. This little gem was used to cut through skin or muscle in case of a uh, a break or a sever 
where you needed to cut through the muscle in order to remove pieces of the bone from your hand or your arm or your leg so that the doctor could later amputate or otherwise seal it up. This was used for cauterization. The tip of this would be dipped into the fire until it was red hot and then it would be put, the tip would be put into the, um, the wound until it cauterized the wound and stopped the bleeding. This caused many infections, which then mugwort would be used for. And they, um, they also used balms that were made of rose hips and turpentine, because turpentine would clean out the wound, uh, and earthworm, because earthworm and the fat of small animals would, according to them, fuse the rose hips and the turpentine. This was good for digging around. Whatever it was, if it was an open wound, or maybe, um, maybe a leech got away from you when you had stuck a leech to your veins in order to pull out some blood, high, highly fevered blood. This was used for um, strep throat, most notably on uh, then prior President Washington in 1799. And they would leach the blood and then take this if a leech decided to get away and just sort of pop it right off so that none of the leech was left in the vein. Thank you for visiting us here at Griffith Morgan House, your historical house to visit here in Pensacon, located off River Road on Griffith Morgan Lane, right here in Pensacon near Del Air. Uh, we hope to see you again soon.